What's good, guys? It's Mr. E. I've been uh, getting a lot of people asking me to do a Demon Slayer guide, so here you go. I hope you enjoy. Alright, so let's assume that you just hit Hell 1 and you're wanting to make a melee Demon Slayer. You don't want to work on a Gunner, even though Gunner is probably the best choice for you at the beginning. You're ready to just make a melee build, that's what you want. Alright, so first off, you'd want to plug in your skills, right? So let's go ahead and look at the skills. Most of the skills on the Gunslinger side actually don't benefit you. However, some of them do. So let's go ahead and plug in a couple of them first off. Trigger foot finger does not work. Execute does not work. Shadow grasp does work. And Demon Shield does work. So these two skills are why I plug in any points on the left tree whatsoever. And they're just for safety measures. Mostly just the Demon Shield. Then we will go down what points we want to put in the right tree. Which is the most important points. So fast slices I don't like to use. It hits the enemy up in the air. It knocks them. It makes you dash and I don't like it. It kind of is something you'd have to get used to if you decided to use it. When I first start off though, if I was to plug points into my character, like let's say I'm leveling up and I'm just putting points in, I wouldn't put any points into the left tree. I'd start by putting some into uh, vitals and fast slices probably. None of these perks right here are gonna work for you. And neither is this one so plugging in points into the left tree isn't actually beneficial at all and on top of that these two skills are really hard to use at the beginning as well unless you have like really high level to where you can start throwing in a bunch of points and that's why i started this build at hell mode because you're probably close to level 100 by now or level 100 and it makes more sense to play melee at that point definitely don't recommend playing melee at level one because it's really hard to spec out if you're not going gunner. So with that being said, let's plug in the rest of the points. You're gonna put one point into here, one point into here, then you're just gonna go all the way down to you plug one into all of them. All of these are very good in their own right. So let's look at the skills real quick. So Demon's Calling. Demon's Calling is actually really nice if you don't have armor break on any of your skills. So with that being said, we're going to at least leave one point into here and we're going to probably plug it into our actual skill tree or our uh, tool bar, I should say. Um, heart attack and vitals are where your primary damage is going to come from eventually. So we're going to go ahead and stack points into that. We're also going to put at least up to 25 points into this. So let's take the seven all talents that we happen to have right now on our gear, which we'll get to that in a second. And we'll plug in at least, what, 18? 18 points will make critical chance say 25 on it. That will bring my overall crit hit up to 25 extra points. Then we're gonna go ahead and go down to demon form. We're gonna spec as many points as we can into that to get the cooldown down. So you see the cooldown is going down every point even at 20 out of 7 or 27 total we're only at 8.5 that's actually not good enough we need to try to get that to uh, 5.8 if we can uh, anything higher than that means we won't stay in this form at all times so with that being said we need more cooldown as much as we can get um, if you can't get the cooldown early on, then I don't recommend specking all the points into this because it's not really going to help you that much. Because this goes on a 6 second cooldown. Basically, it lasts for 6 seconds. And if it's at cooldown of like 8.5, then there's 2.5 seconds that you're not going to be able to be in this form. So you're not getting the bonus. So let's just pretend we have the cooldown at like 6 or 5.8 and we're good. Um, we're gonna stack at least 20 into this. 
because this is a lot of damage coming off of you. It's a chance that when you auto attack, you'll send out swirling attacks that do damage. And then on out of these two, which is the most important, that's completely up to you. I believe personally that vitals is the most important and then second comes heart attack. Um, heart attack is really nice, but it's really dependent on your gear and it's really dependent on how much damage you get from vitals. So I think I would just plug in 20 into this and then the remaining into heart attack. Okay. So this is how I would build my guy at level 100 if I was going for a melee build. So now that we have cooldown set to 15%, let's see what we actually have. So this is what I plugged into my character. Um, I wanted to go as basic as I could. So I wanted to show you guys what it's like to have like level one gear, to have like a realistic quality, not everything's 100%, some stuff might be. Um, most of this stuff is easy to get. Um, I have a bunch of different pieces that you could find along the way and a bunch of different pieces that you might be able to buy off of others for cheap. So let's take a look at what I plugged on and uh, we'll see what you can get from this whole concept. So first off, Rift Warrior Skull, very, very common item. Uh, it has damage reduction, it has a bunch of physical damage, it has all talents, it rolls some random resistances. So this is a very good item to have at the beginning when you first start. As you're leveling, you might find something like All Seeing Eye or you might be able to pick this up. It gives a lot of all resistance, so if you're looking for more resistance, this is the way to go. It gives more, it gives actual cooldown and it gives more damage reduction. Um, it also gives way more armor. And it's an A tier instead of a B tier. As far as tiers go, that's just basically their way of saying rarity. So it's a higher rarity. It's a little bit harder of a chance to find as a drop. So and it also comes with an extra alt talent. So this is a replaceable item. If you really wanted, you'd drop some damage, but you'd get way more tanky using this. Ravenclaw. This is another replaceable item that you can get later over Rift Warriors, or if you find it, it's a better option. Obviously it comes with a ton of crit. It has the all talents as well. Uh, this one happened to roll with a bonus resistance. This one can't roll with a bonus, but this one can. So if you're lucky, you'd find like a, a different bonus that fits what you're looking for. And this is a really good item to have uh, as a replacement. Later, and I mean really later, if you get really lucky, you can find this or you could buy it off of somebody. Calyx Fury, it always comes with an attack speed roll. You can get lucky and get a bonus to that and it'll be 0.75 instead of 0.50. Uh, its ability allows you to basically boost the hell out of your attack speed. So it says it increases your attack speed by 10% and lasts two seconds and it stacks up to 10 times. So if you hit the enemy 10 times, uh, there's a chance that it will stack up to basically 100% more attack speed and it only applies on the hit. You can't sit there and just attack in midair, it won't go off, you actually have to hit the enemy and it will apply within those two seconds of hitting. It doesn't really show that there's a huge cooldown, so there's potential that it can go off constantly. Yeah, it's very very good. This is one of the fastest uh, attack buff items in the game. And this is a really good item to have maybe late game if you're looking for something to boost your attack speed. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have like any damage rolls almost on it, but that's the sacrifice you'll have to make if you're looking for a lot of attack speed. And so that covers the necklaces. We move on to the helms. I didn't really give a lot of selections, but I'd say between the two items that you can get early on, and these are actually well-known items, these aren't new. You can get some of the really new new items that dropped this season and you might find something that you really like that's comparable if not better so those new new items that drop this season there are quite a bit of random rolls on all of them and you can decide whether or not you want to run with those or not they actually drop way more commonly as well so uh judge jury executioner very very good 
probably a replacement to the Zeus's circlet. If you actually find Zeus's circlet, or if you can get the Zeus set, that's why I plugged it onto my character. It's because of the buff. Basically, it has a chance to auto attack uh, a lightning orb that will shock nearby enemies. And on top of that, it has cooldown, it has attack speed, it just has some really nice stats that you can have as a set. And that's why I chose that at the beginning. It's a little bit, I would say, well, I would say they're both pretty similar on drop rates, but uh, depending on what you're looking for, um, both of these are really good starter choices. I would probably go with this personally, but for the beginning setup, I went ahead and went with that. So I feel like it's a little bit easier to come by. Um, the other Zeus item is the armor plate that I put on. And the only reason I chose that instead of the boots, because there's a three piece set and you only need two of them to get the buff, is because I went ahead and went with uh, quick steps. It's really hard to replace these um, at the very beginning. Once you make this quick steps, you get a plus two all talents, you get a lot of all resist, you get cooldown, you get mana per second, you get HP, you get armor, you get speed. It's a lot for a really super easy to make rune word and it's really hard to, to actually get something better. But later on, you might find something and here are the options that you can go by. Uh, maybe you'll wanna get the battle-worn boots. It's not like the best option you can find out of all of them, but at least it rolls with all resist. It has some attack speed and then it comes with some basic stats. It comes with more armor overall and more speed. It also would apply with the other piece if you had both battle worn items you'd get the battle worn bonus which basically means every third attack has a bigger damage so it empowers your third attack which means you'll do more damage every three hits um, i just randomly threw it on because it's not that hard to find but at the same time they kind of up its rarity so you might not find it as early on diamond greaves Another really good item that could replace quick steps, has a lot of all resist, has damage reduction, comes with a lot of uh, armor and all that other stuff. So it's a good tanking item that can replace quick steps. As you see by the stats, the quick steps aren't really good for damage e anyways. So you're basically going for a conversion of like more tankiness if you're gonna swap. This Assassin's Shadow Boots would be one of the changes that you'd make if you were going to swap over from more tanky to more damage. So Assassin's Shadow Boots is another good starter pair of boots. This one happened to roll with a bonus of more attack speed, which is possible. And it came, comes with crit rate, crit damage. It only rolls with one resist, so you're not getting as much resistance as you do from the other ones. So you'll have to make up for that using other items. And this would be... The preferred pair of boots basically um, for damage that's an actual easy to get cheap item you might be able to find like I said one of the satanics that dropped this season that has super randomly rolled stats and it might be way better than this so look out for that while you're on the hunt and look out for it on auction house um, going over to belts there's really only two pairs of belts that drop that you're Demon Slayer can use at the beginning at level requirement 75. The rest are kind of super randomly rolled satanics that drop this season and I don't have any of their names memorized. Their stats roll super randomly. So these are the two to choose from. You can choose tribal belt, go for a lot of strength, goes for it has elemental damage on it. Or you can go for warrior's belt, has strength and a bunch of physical and it also has some attack speed. So depending on if you're going for attack speed or you're going for just like elemental and stuff, it's really dependent on you. I don't know why, but this tribal belt rolled an extra bonus roll stat. I didn't think that was a possibility, but I guess the reason why is because this is considered tier A and this is considered tier B. Uh, there's the same level requirement and everything, but for some reason I guess the developer said this one is a little bit rarer, <laughs> so let's give it a chance to have a bonus stat roll. Don't ask me why, they just did. So I went ahead and plugged that onto our guy just because it's a little more rare. 
has a chance to get an extra ability roll. Over here in rings, there's really only a couple options that you can get that are level 90 requirement and or really well rolled. Um, if you're going for more resistance, you'll want to go with the Satanic Eye. This one happened to roll with an attack speed bonus. I just plugged it on because we need more resist anyway. If you want to go for more damage, Lucky Loop is a really good, well-known ring that you can get. And you can also find it in vendors in the game. On top of that, uh, there's a bunch of really randomly rolled satanic rings that drop this season. So you could always find something that's in between that you like better. So look out for that. Um, as far as potions go, you're probably not going to use any of these potions at the beginning because they're all level 100. You're probably just going to stick with a typical mythic or legendary one for a while. Um, or if you happen to find an empty bottle of vodka, it has no stats on it, but it has six sockets. So you could always plug some runes into that if you want, just to get a little bit bonus health or cooldown or something. Um, these are the potions I decided to show off. As so soon as you get to 100, you can start plugging them in. A uh, bottle of sake gives you a bonus to crit rate. And then whenever you actually um, use the potion, you get an additional 35% crit damage. That's kind of huge, but at the same time, I don't think this is the best potion. I just thought that maybe this was the one you would find first out of all of them, so I just plugged it on. Uh, Ghostly Potion is kind of nice. It gives you an all talents, and then it can, like, all these potions can roll a bonus roll. But uh, this comes with all talents. Whenever you use it, you temporarily go invisible. And when you go invisible, bosses and stuff basically stop using their attacks for a couple seconds, so that makes it really nice. You can stand in front of a boss and just attack them for a few seconds without worrying about them aggroing onto you. Um, another item is Protein Shake. This is the item that I would prefer out of all of them. Not only do you get a huge percent bonus to strength, but whenever you use its ability, you actually get a 50% strength boost for temporarily. I, I think it's probably around like five to eight seconds and it's pretty nice. It really is. Um, another option if you're struggling to get your resistances up is Prismatic Potion. It gives you an all resist. Um, it can roll a bonus so you can get something you actually want on it. And then whenever you use the potion, you actually boost your overall max resist by 6% even more. So every time you use the potion, your, your all resist will even go up higher, which is kind of nice. So if you're looking for all resist, this is the potion for you. Um, let's say by chance you decide, I'm not gonna run a two-hander. Well, I plugged in a two-hander anyways, because I feel like if you're gonna go melee, you're gonna wanna go damage anyway. You're not gonna wanna go tankiness. But let's say that you do want to run with a shield. There's two options I plugged in early on that are very easy to get items. So Unholy God's Flail is a one-hander. It allows you to have physical and strength. It's not super fast attack speed, so this isn't the item you'd want for attack speed. But overall, its stats are very decent for a Demon Slayer. Um, and it's a good starter one hand that you can wear at level 75. Perdition. Perdition is one that you can also wear at level 75. It's a rune word that you can actually craft. As you can see, this one rolled lightning. It's very risky. You use some decently high to get uh, runes, but not super impossible for somebody who's starting off, especially if your friend or somebody's like, hey, I've been playing a while. I'll make one for you. It's not that hard. Like, if you have people that are able to make them for you, it's probably the way to go. Um, it rolls with a bonus called Fantasism, and Fantasism allows you to have an attack speed buff, which is basically permanent, as long as you're attacking. And it can roll up to a 20 out of, uh, I believe, 11. So 11 is probably the lowest it can roll, and 20 is the highest. And the higher the roll, the more attack speed you get out of it. This also will apply if you decide to put it on your Merc. So if you run around with a Merc, then your Merc can apply this for you and you can have the buff almost at all times, which is really nice. As you can see, the stats are really nice at level one. You can roll it at any element. The only thing it can't roll is elemental. I think that it used to be able to roll maybe poison and they took it off. And hopefully if you're lucky enough, you end up getting 
physical. Um, that's the risk of making rune words, is it can roll randomly sometimes. And not only are you looking for a physical, but you're also looking for a high roll on the buff. Um, what shield would you use at the beginning? I just went ahead and threw on the most common and decent shields that you can get at the very beginning. It could be worn at level 50, and it comes with all resist, it comes with elemental damage, cooldown, damage reduction, decent amount of armor, all stats. To be fair, this is a really nice shield for a low level character, and I would probably plug that on if you could. There are really random shields that you can get this season as well, like I said, so maybe you'll find something you like better than that. Or maybe you'll go for like a higher version shield that's a rune word or something later. But for a starter, melee, demon slayer, I'd say this is a pretty decent choice. Um, back to two hands though. So out of all the two handers, I went ahead and chose three typical ones that are actually decent. Uh, Jade Warriors, Gladius, if you roll a physical damage one, because this can roll I believe maybe poison or fire. I don't know why, um, but uh, physical is the one you would want. Uh, don't worry about the actual um, skill, that's not really something you care too much about. You're basically focused just on the abilities and the fact that it has a t uh, two attacks per second, which is really nice, especially for a two-hander. And it comes with the physical and strength rolls, so this is a really decent weapon for a starter. Uh, if you happen to find the Light of Dawn, it's actually better. It comes with a lot of elemental damage, it comes with an all talent, it comes with attack speed, and it comes with even more strength. It's almost as much attack speed, but the base damage is way higher. This would be a way better option than uh, Jade Warrior's Gladius. But if you don't have the funds, or you don't happen to drop one, then I mean, this is going for pretty cheap, and it's not a bad option. Overall, I went ahead and went with Shattered Dimensions. The only reason why is because it comes with a bunch of crit, and everybody knows crit is king in most games. So we're going with a crit build, we went with a bunch of crit. Um, it always comes with Magic Find, which is kind of nice, so you have the ability to find better drops because it has Magic Find on it. And uh, it also comes with a super amazing ability called Teleport. Teleport is an basically an ability you put on your hotbar which allows you to basically teleport you uh, move a couple like blocks ahead every time you teleport which is really nice um, you can spam it it doesn't cost that much mana and it has no cooldown so you can just basically blink around the map really super fast or get out of situations using it it's really nice so I went with shattered dimensions I think it's probably the overall best two-hander you can have for a starter class Unfortunately, you have to be level 90 to wear it. Um, this one's a level 80, and this one's a level 75. So I'm just factoring in that you guys are probably at level 100 if you're swapping to a melee. But maybe some of you are starting with melee and making it hard on yourself, and uh, just showing you what you can do, what you can get. As far as charms go, uh, I went with a very decent charm that you can get and start wearing at level 90 called Aztec Coin. Obviously this one just randomly rolled wind damage. You can find one with physical if you're lucky. That's not really the point. The point is it has a ton of health on it. It has a ton of armor. It has cooldown and it has a bunch of all resist. That's something you're going to need when playing. You're just going to need to have some tankiness somewhere and this is where I threw it. I threw it into the charm. If you're lucky you might find a random satanic that has random rolls on it that are better than this but if you can't find anything like that great this is also not a bad choice and it gives you a bunch of tankiness uh you can go with an apple of evolution for a little bit more damage if you want or you can just straight up go for something more end game right away i didn't plug that in because i figured you're starting you're not trying to go for end game so this is what i chose and as far as gloves go, I put a couple different choices. So, as you're starting, you might find a couple different gloves. Um, I plug the Battle Worn Gauntlets on. It has attack speed, it has strength, it has damage reduction, it has some resists on it, which is nice. Uh, it even has some base damage, which isn't plugged in down here at all. So, that's an extra 
bonus damage that it comes with as well. Um, as you're going through clearing, you might find other things like Scarab Gauntlets. They give life per hit, and they give damage reduction. They give a lot more armor than something like this, and they give all resists. So if you're going for tankiness, Scarab Gauntlets is a really good choice at the beginning. Um, a better option, if you happen to get a, this, is Scuttle Crab Gauntlets. They're kind of like the older, more buff version. They come with even more all resist. They can come with a bonus roll. This one happened to roll cooldown, and uh, it has even more HP and armor. So this is a better option if you can choose between the two. Um, you're getting rid of life per hit, which is kind of nice, but you're going for way more tankiness and reduction. Um, once you get even higher, maybe you'll want something with damage and less tankiness. So Siege Breakers is a really good option. Siege Breakers has not that amazing of stats overall, but it has some decent rolls. It can also roll a bonus stat. This one happened to roll with all talents. And uh, it comes with an ability, which is what makes these actually good. So it has a 25% chance on attack to apply both armor break and elemental break. And these roll independently. So basically, uh, every other hit can either apply elemental break or armor break. And both of those are nice because basically it lets you bypass the enemy shield and do direct damage. So this is a really decent pair of gloves to have at the beginning that will instantly buff your damage for sure. It's guaranteed at the beginning. But later on maybe you'll find some really good gloves or something that will actually bypass the elemental and armor break. So it makes it so that you're not going to want to use these. But at the beginning it's very nice. Assassin's Mitts might be that pair of gloves that you end up replacing uh, Siege Breakers with. It can roll really random um, stat, just like Siege Breakers, but it comes with a decent amount of attack speed, crit rate, crit damage, damage reduction, all stats, has okay armor. So this is a really good pair of gloves that you can have as you're progressing. They're not the end game of end game items, but they are really nice and you can wear them at level 90. So going down to more end game, there is a gauntlet you can craft and this is a rune word. This takes two high boss runes that you can find in the game or you can buy them and plugging it in will give you way better stats than assassin myths. The only difference between this and assassin's myths is assassin's myths can be rolled higher than 100% so this is the max that you can get on this pair of gloves. The only difference is it can be rolled 10 out of 10. And this is the abilities that it will roll every single time. Um, it can roll, I think, different resistances though. So depending on what you're looking for in resistances, you might have to make multiple versions or you might have to trade with somebody. But it will always roll crit rate, crit damage, mana per second, cooldown, all talents, elemental damage flat, and then ability, power, attack power, stamina, armor. It's a very good end game type gauntlet that you can craft later on if you're looking for something to just throw on that's really good. There are random satanics, like I said, that you can find that have random rolls. So maybe you'll get lucky to find something you like better than this. Or maybe you'll find way higher chase end game stuff later. But this is a very good end game uh, pair of gloves as well. Um, going to chest pieces, let's say you're not going for the Zeus setup and let's say you put on like Judge Jury Executioner and you want something that's really good for the chest piece. Well, you have a chance to find Gladiator's Demise. This is, can be worn at level 50. It's a very decent chest piece for a starter and it comes with strength, uh, strength percent, physical attack speed, physical flat, and some resistances. So it's not a bad choice to plug on instead. Um, once you get a little bit more into the game, maybe you'll want to replace that with something better. Dark Shroud is a very good choice. It has bonus, or it has a chance to roll a bonus, I should say. So maybe you'll get lucky and it rolls a bonus in one of the stats you want. Uh, this one happened to just give random poison resist, but it has crit. Crit rate, attack speed, has actual speed for movement, comes with dodge always, which 
Nobody really cares too much about dodge anymore. It has a lot more armor. It has all stats on it. It comes with some health. So overall, this is a way better option than Gladiator's Demise. And it'll sync the crit with the crit that comes from Judge Jury Executioner. So you're just stacking crit with crit, which can't really go wrong with that, right? Um, for all testing purposes, I'm just going to keep the Zeus stuff on. I feel like it's uh, something that you guys might end up using instead early on. So I'll keep that on as the way it is. Uh, I'm going to assume that you guys probably won't find this. So let's just throw on something maybe you will find like scuttle gauntlets instead. Um, and let's just keep it as is. So as is, we have the build set up. Um, we need to plug in hero levels. We're gonna say zero. I'm gonna say you're just level 100. You haven't even gotten a level up yet. Mercenary, this is how I'd plug it in. I'm gonna say that you plugged in a lot into HP and shielding so that you can tank or your merc can help tank for you. Um, Symbiosis I plugged in 20 so that your Merc, take when you take damage, he takes a portion of it for you instead. Plugged in some for Replenish, and I plugged in 20 for Armor Break so that your uh, Merc has a chance to apply Armor Break for you when he hits the target. Um, I didn't put a Merc on. I figured that maybe you won't have the Rubies to buy a Merc, and if you did, then that's what you would use. So no Merc. Um, as far as what skills should I put on the tr on the talent tree, I'm going to go ahead and put Demon Form. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Soul Leech. And I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, Demon's Calling on. Because we have the Teleport option, I'm going to put Teleport on the right tree, or the right skill. What I like to do is I like to plug all of my skills onto one button. But because I have Teleport, I went ahead and separated it. So teleport is my right click and the rest of the buttons is my left click. And let's see what type of damage we do. See that shock? That's because I have the Zeus set on. So by itself, the Zeus set is already doing damage without me having to attack. I walk into a room and all the enemies just start getting shocked. It's kind of nice. That's just a bonus of the Zeus set. You see this arrow? This arrow pointing off is actually your vitals. Like I was talking about, vitals has an angled arrow that appears and wherever that angled arrow is, is where your vitals will attack. So let's see what type of damage we can actually put out. I'm gonna, like I said, use the um, crit rate um, potion. And we have a decent amount of crit and crit damage already. So let's see what we do. Go into the form and attack. So with this setup, we're doing around like 2 million damage, level 100, all gear is just 1 out of 10, and uh, some of it is level 100%, the rest is like 85%, 90%. I wanted it to be realistic, like I said, none of it's leveled up, this is just plain items. Some of you might be able to get it real early. Maybe your friends will have it. They'll just drop it for you. Others will have to farm it. It's just how it is. This is the starter setup for the melee. And uh, if I was to swap some stuff out, let's go and plug this on instead. Just having that resistance potion made a huge difference. Let's say I put this back on as well. Having two resistances almost brings everything up to 40% or higher, except for the poison. So just that alone is really nice. Um, let's see what happens just replacing that stuff. Wow. So there you go. Overall though, this is probably the way you'd want. You probably want to go way more resistance if you can. That way you can tank stuff. You also want to go with uh, Siege Breakers if you want to apply the elemental and armor break. 
Uh, if you can't get lucky enough, like I said, you want to try to find something else to actually boost your overall resistances and, and reduction. If you can, you want to keep your reduction somewhere around here. Uh, 19k is probably the very bare minimum of where I would be if I was in hell mode 1. Uh, once you go into demon form, you'll notice that your damage reduction will go even higher, which is really nice. So that's why you want to try to get your cooldown up. That way you can stay in demon form at all times. And like I said, you can't do that unless your cooldown on this skill is 5.8 or lower. Here is the relics that I decided to go with. You could choose whatever relics you want, but these are the ones that I went with. And if you guys don't know what the relics do, please feel free to check out my relics build guide that I put together in a separate video that will explain all of the relics to you and what they do. So there you have it. That's the melee basic beginner guide. Moving into the gunner builds. So the gunner builds are something that I recommend early on for Demon Slayer. You can choose to use this and run into end game content as well if you would like. But definitely while leveling up to 100 and maybe the early hell mode stuff, I recommend using the gunner. The gunner is really easy to build. The gunner does a ridiculous amount of damage early on. And for the most part, its gear is relatively cheap. So why wouldn't you go with the gunner? So what type of talent should I plug in if I'm gonna run as a gunner demon slayer? Well, let's take a look. So first things first, you're gonna mostly be using the left side a gunslinger tree uh, when you're leveling you're just gonna plug your points into here so you'll just be spamming about five into here and five into here and then as you finally hit level 12 you're gonna respec and put almost all of your points into bullet health this is where you're gonna really shine and get carried by the, the actual gunner build so you do this and you'd spec 12 into here if you can or actually it would stop you at 10 so you'd get 10 into here. Um, as you get more points, you just start putting them into execute. This will make it to where you do more damage to enemies who have less than 50% health. Um, eventually, when you get level 100, this is what you would plug in. So you plug in these points, you would plug in this and this. You only want one point into absolute mayhem. At least that's how I play it. You can play with more points if you want. This is kind of like your AoE that you get off of your character and it kind of just shoots off at random. Um, obviously the less cooldown on it, the more often you'll shoot it. So you'll do a lot of damage if it keeps shooting off. I think it's just there at, as a random damage. I'd use it as a random damage. All of my damage for the most part comes from bullet hell. And so that's where I spec almost all of my points is to go into bullet hell. This is your bread and butter and that's what you're going to be running with. The best part about it as well is it doesn't get factored into attack speed. So with this build, you don't need any attack speed whatsoever. You don't have to build into it. It doesn't actually help you at all. It's this, yeah, it's really nice. You're, you have a consistent attack speed with the bullet hell and that's where this comes in. This is where this build really shines. So I put 20 into here. I'd also put uh, 20 into demon's presence. This. Just adds additional damage to nearby enemies. It's really nice. Uh, I use Shredder a lot. Shredder does a lot of damage, so I put 20 into that. And before we go too nuts, we actually have to add a couple points into the Executioner side. So this doesn't help, this doesn't help, but Focused Mind does. So we want to make sure we have a total of 25 into this so that we can get the bonus uh, crit hit. So seven plus what? You can actually, you don't actually have to count it. You can look over on the left and see the crit chance. See every time I click it, it goes up. We want it to hit 25 and then we stop. So 18 plus seven equals 25. And that's where we're gonna stop for the crit chance. Having extra crit damage is kind of nice, but we don't need it at the beginning. That's not really going to help us when our crit damage is actually kind of low. Now, remaining points. This is where it comes into your decision. Do you want to put that into armor break? So you can add extra points into armor break. Or do you want to put it into 
uh, you do more damage to enemies whose HP is 50% or lower. Personally, I plug the points into Execute, but you might want to do the armor break. It's really up to you. I went ahead and plugged in a couple into, I think, Eagle Eye. That way I can get armor break to 20. So I kept clicking it until I saw armor break be 20. Then I stopped. The rest I plugged into execute. So that's that's this is what I would do. This is what I did in live when I was building up my demon slayer to melee, and this is what I would do as well if I was you. So let's go into the actual gear setup. I basically mimic the same thing for my melee and my gunner build. Why? Because they both work and it's the most realistic setup that you're probably going to find early on. Uh, the only big difference is really the weapons. So let's take a look at the weapons. Um, early on you have a couple choices and that's about it. The rest is like mythic or bow types and I don't recommend using a bow whatsoever early on unless you have like a really super good mythic that you don't want to give up. First thing, like I said, we plugged in bullet hell. Bullet hell has nothing to do with attack speed. So no matter what you're using, you don't have to even look at it and think, man, I want uh, that because it has higher attack speed. Attack speed doesn't matter. Um, I like to plug in these, these three skills is all I use. I don't put on any of the other ones. I don't think they matter. So I just mimic bullet hell twice. It doesn't cost you any extra mana or anything. It just basically frees up the slot from having to have something random. And then I put shredder and I put uh, absolute mayhem on. So that's how I set up my skills. Uh, I don't normally have them separated. I have them all on one button. So since I have this set up the way I had it for the melee, I'll go in and change that real quick. All right, so they're all left click now. Um, and as you can see, that's how fast that it shoots. And this is basically a, con a consistent speed that you're not going to be able to get slower or faster. Any slower would be dependent on your computer just lagging or the game having a slow-mo effect on you. It's not really you shooting slower. Um, and as far as attack speed, it won't benefit you whatsoever on bullet hell. This is as fast as it's always going to go. So. Attack speed on weapons does not matter. What are you looking for though? So when you first start off, you're gonna probably have an option between these two. These two are the most common weapons that you're gonna find in the game as soon as you move up. And it really comes down to which one do you find first and which one do you actually want on your character. So the what did I, what did I look at when I was playing? So I looked at a lot of features. One of the features I looked at was the base damage. Which one of these is better for base damage? Well, as you level it, the base damage of Marine's Buddy is actually way higher than Warbringer uh, overall. So if you're going for base damage, Marine's Buddy will outbeat the one-handed Warbringer. Uh, when it comes down to flat damage, um, it actually drops off a little bit at, on, at level one compared to Warbringer, because Warbringer has a bunch of crit on it. Crit is very, very nice, and it helps a lot. As you progress and you level both of them 10 out of 10, uh, the damage drops off pretty significantly on Warbringer, and Mar Marine's buddy actually will win. Um, but at the beginning, Warbringer might be a little bit better. On top of that, with Warbringer on, you can actually wear a shield. So let's just say that I put like Ward of Toxicity on, and this is what I would probably run when I first start. However, as you move forward, you might want to actually use something else and you might want to upgrade to a even higher version of a gun. So then you have the choice between Jack and Fred and the RTX. What would I choose if I was you? Um, actually, piercing is ridiculous. Um, this is a skill that comes on the weapon manually and it allows you to basically hit one enemy and the bullet will continue through another enemy, through another enemy, through an another enemy, 
On top of that, some of the bosses have hitboxes and it will travel through all their hitboxes so it helps kill them faster. Uh, don't tell anyone I said this, but Satan has multiple hitboxes. Anyways, um, if you're going to go between both of the guns, they're both really, really well uh, balanced. They have a ton of base damage. They have a lot of really good skills. It really comes down to which one of these you like and prefer most. Um, overall, I went with RTX QC on my build. I like the attack speed, like I said, makes no difference. I just thought that because of the overall rolls, like more crit rate is a little bit better, uh, a little bit higher physical damage roll. Um, yeah, there's not a lot difference. To be honest, I just went with this because it was something I found being sold in the Shadow Realm, and when it's maxed out, its overall damage is very similar to Jack and Fred, and you can really swap between either or, and it wouldn't make a huge difference. I think the biggest difference is literally the skill piercing, so you can roll that using an ability token and have that on Jack and Fred, no problem, or you could just go with RTX QC and not have to worry about it and have a random ability here like crit strike or something instead. So that being said, if you're going for an end game gun, these two are probably the way to go. If you're not going for something a little bit higher, which would be a more uh, end game build. So none of these are end game. They are very mid tier though. If you're going to go for a mid tier setup, these two are probably going to be your sweet spot at the beginning on what you're going to end up going for um, as you're moving forward towards the melee build if you end up wanting to go the melee build route. So, all talents, nothing really changes. You can actually go in and uh, replace some of the attack speed stuff if you want um, with more, um, I don't know, damage reduction stuff, more convenient stuff like uh i don't know what type of stuff do you like you can plug in other things that you like instead like i said convenience you don't need the attack speed setup like you don't need amputation kit if you don't want i just just felt lazy and just threw a bunch of stuff on because these things are really nice but you don't actually have to have like more if you don't want you can replace this with more movement speed if you want you can plug in a couple more cubes to get like some more percent stuff. You can plug in uh, maybe um, a sword to give more strength or something. So this is just what I have plugged on for this. You can plug in whatever you want. This isn't the most optimal setup for the gunner build. Um, I didn't plug in a merc. I didn't plug any hero, hero levels. All of that is the same as what I have set up for the melee build. Um, Zeus setup, Rift Warrior, Aztec. Uh, you can switch between these, or like I said, a uh, Siege Breaker if you want. I just threw on this stuff. Obviously, out of all of these, Protein Shake would be the better go to, but I went ahead and went with Bottle of Sake. And Quick Steps, Tribal Belt. So, let's see what the type of damage we pull off is. And this is using basically the same setup as the melee, just completely different skills. And uh, we're not using demon form anymore. It doesn't actually work with gunner. So let's see what type of uh, damage we can do to this dummy using the same setup. As you can see, right off of the beginning, Gunner is just way outshining the melee setup. And on top of that, we don't have to have any attack speed. We don't have to have demon form or anything like that. However, our resistances are lacking a little bit, which you might have to plug in other things to fix that. Or you're just going to have to upgrade stuff that has all resist on it. Um, you can always swap to that if you want. Bring the resistances up a little. See how much that makes a difference. Doesn't seem to make a huge difference. 
So when it comes down to it, guys, it really comes down to what do you prefer. I really think that Gunner outshines Melee at the beginning. It really does. It's a lot easier to use. You can shoot from range. You don't have to sacrifice standing close to any of the enemies and taking a hit. You also can throw away attack speeds. So you don't have to worry about having things with a lot of attack speed on it, which is really hard to get later on. So go have fun, do what you want with both builds. But I feel like Gunner is the way to go for a while until you can actually set up gear and swap over to melee. All right, guys, so here we go. We have the end game Gunner Demon Slayer build, and this is how I spec'd out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the skills first. I basically plugged in almost the same as I did on the beginner setup, but I went ahead and took more out of the armor break and I put it more into execute. And the only reason I did so is because now on my setup I have armor break already using uh, the Satan set. And I will show you that in a moment. I have 100% crit. Most of it comes from gear, but I did plug in at least one Wii rune in order to get my crit hit to 100. I also have bonus points over here. That way I get the maximum 25% crit rate out of my skills. And yeah, that's that hero levels um i honestly don't know which one of these is best they all kind of don't seem to do a lot of damage difference um you can go ahead and put burst fire if you want i only did this because it helps apply the damage of my actual shot earlier because it shoots faster like my primary shoots faster it doesn't really seem to make a difference with multi-shot and if you want the overall bullet size of bullet hell does go up a little bit from three times I don't know if it's actually that much more damage, but between these two, it's really up to you. I just stuck with first shot, because why not? And then obviously, strength. So, went with shield, could have went with any of these, it would have actually improved my damage overall, but I went with this just for the tankiness, because I don't want to die. Um, Merc, I went ahead and went with the melee Merc. I tried both ranged and melee, and they're both pretty decent, but might as well go with the melee. Um, this is not correct though, so let's go ahead and reset his skills. I'm gonna do this. Do, 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 do. Uh, might as well do this this do this do that and eh. okay so that looks pretty good that's the way we're gonna set it up all right so that's the melee merc and what i'm gonna do is show you guys the setup now so it's actually a lot easier to put together than it is the melee setup it is however like five times less damage i don't know how to get it much higher but i got it to i feel like almost as high as it can go without taking the items past 100 percent and so this is what i have i have the two-piece satan set um nothing specifically rolled bonus on them besides resistant and some health um the sheep king's crown so these three pieces and then the ha havoc all of those are the same as what the melee slayer setup is um, I also have the Giant's Band of Strength, and I'm using that for the Colossus bonus. I'm using the three-piece Demon Slayer setup. Um, Demon and Angel is the best gun in the game, hands down. It is very comparable to St. Brooks's one-handed pistol, but technically it outdamages it in every single aspect. It kind of saddens me because I wanted to be able to use one-handed with a shield. <laughs> I really did. It's just not as good, unfortunately. But what I can do is show you guys another setup with one-hander and shield if you guys are interested. So I'll show you guys um, after I get done showing off this setup real quick. We went with Protein Shake, obvious reasons. Uh, it doesn't crap ton of damage and this build doesn't rely on... Uh, any type of attack speed so we don't need attack speed at all and uh 
Last but not least, I plugged together a really random uh, satanic belt that I found. Uh, there are other options, obviously. You can get Commander Sash, or you can use a um, Belt of Skulls, or you can wear like a Rugal's or whatever. But this one is just so random, but so good, I couldn't pass it up. So just a War Boss's Trophy Belt that rolls super randomly. You can see I have a whole bunch of different ones that I had. They all rolled completely random. So basically you just go with your gut, go with which, what you find and what you think is the best. And this just is so good I couldn't pass it up. So that's what I have on. Um, and that's the setup. Yeah, basically. In a nutshell. And my relics is what I went with. Uh, they could be changed up if you'd like. I really do like the way this is set up though. I'd say this is pretty close to end game setup as far as relics go. All right, so if I was doing a one-handed build with a shield, what would I change? So I would go to the pistol. Let's find the one that has Pentaslash. For some reason, Pentaslash is the best go-to. Tested out all of the actual abilities and weapon throw seemed okay, but it wasn't as good. Mark target isn't needed because we have it on our Merc. And weapon sweep was okay, but no thanks. So we'd go one hand there. We would put Defender's Justice on because it gives you the same bonus as the ring. And it has a really good amount of stats. So we put that on. Then we would go over to here. This isn't needed anymore. And we put Absence of Constraint on. That way we get the two piece set up for here. And then that's what we do. That's all you would change if you are actually going to uh, go one-handed with a shield. That way you could get maybe a little bit more damage reduction. You'd see that your crit falls off a little bit. All you'd have to do is literally find pieces with crit rate rolls on it. Like all the pieces I have, none of them have a crit rate roll, so just get more crit rate rolls if you really wanted. Or you could uh, potentially just throw a bunch of Wii runes in that give 1% crit. That's a little bit no, that's a lot of bit more expensive, but it's really up to you. So that's what I'd do if I was going one-handed with a shield. Let's find the one we're looking for. There it is, Pentaslash. Go back to that. And we're back, ready to go. So what kind of damage can this class do with a gun setup? Well, first off, let me show you what the Merc's wearing. So the Merc's wearing pretty close to the same thing as what I'd use on my Melee Slayer, except for I just randomly threw a one-hander weapon on it and threw Mark Target. I did this just because it's a tanky piece of... It's a tanky piece. <laughs> it's about it. It's not anything special. We don't get bonus from anything that gives attack speed, so I just gave him this because it has Holy Shock on it, and uh, just because it's a tanky weapon that we can throw on the Merc to give him a little bit more tankiness. So that's what we're going with, elemental break, armor break, a ridiculous shield that gives a ton of buffs, and uh, mark target roll on him, pet to slash on us. So let's look at what type of damage output we can actually do. Pretty decent, right? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. <laughs> to, to be fair, it's 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 pretty dang good uh, for single target at least. What type of damage can it do multi-target? Well, let's find out. So multi-target, it's decent. Definitely, definitely decent. All right, the time that you guys have been waiting for is finally here. So we have 
the end game demon slayer build this is the one that you guys saw in the teaser video and this is what you guys will want to look for so first off let's go ahead and bring up talents in the talents you'll see that i plugged in at least one point on the left tree to get down to demon shield this is actually really nice it allows me to get a random shield based on the percentage of my weapon damage and it does say on their gunslinger but just ignore that it works for melee as well on top of that shadow's grasp is kind of nice it gives you a chance to have an extra block in there the more points you plug into this the more points of block you'll get unfortunately block and dodge isn't all that amazing this season so i didn't focus on that at all next you'll see on the right tree I plugged in a lot of points, so let's go over the points. Vitals is a huge part of this build. It does a lot of crit damage, and that damage is applied over attack speed. So the more attack speed you have, the more you'll see the vitals shoot off their arrows that are like bolting off of your character, and those arrows do a lot of damage. On top of that, you plug in heart attack, Heart attack allows your vitals to do even more damage, and they also give you a movement speed buff, which is really nice. The more points you put into this, the more physical damage you'll get. We also plugged in at least one into Demon's Calling, and one into Unholy Possession. Um, Demon's Calling is just... Eh. We don't use it, but it is decent. This is a good skill to use if you don't have any armor break whatsoever. With this build, we have plenty of armor break, so we don't have to worry about it. But if you don't have any armor break whatsoever on this build, and you need armor break, at least use this skill just to bypass that and put armor break on the enemy. I do not use it though. However, Unholy Possession. Unholy Possession is actually pretty nuts. I use this in the wormhole clear, I don't use it outside of the wormhole clear, but in wormhole clear I t actually take a lot of points out of Slice of Shadows and I throw it into Unholy Possession and that just helps me with the mob clear because it allows you to kill a mob then possess its body and use that mob to help fight for you. And so when you're running through clearing mobs super fast a lot of them will then become clones and then they'll run around helping you kill stuff. It's really amazing, it's really nice, and it's something you can try if you guys would like. Focused Mind. This is a very huge part of all the builds and obviously it gives the critical chance, critical damage. I found that the way the critical chance works is it actually stops applying critical chance after 25 points so technically if you were to spam this as many times as you can if you have a bunch of all talents and then you have 20 points it'll stop at the 25 mark so if you add like let's say 20 and then plus 5 like all talents that's the max to what you'll get out of crit chance it can't go higher than 25 however the more points that you do plug into it you get way more crit damage so that's why i have 20 points into it we're trying to go as high into the crit damage as we can and that's why i did it slice of shadows it's a very good proc chance skill that's passive so you'll see slices just fly off of your body while you're holding left click the whole time it does a lot of damage as you can see it's like two that two million ish 3 million ish damage per slice and it can go really super fast so it adds up quick um soul leech it's not the best skill but it's actually kind of nice you'll notice it it'll give you a little bit of a shield as well and obviously i only put one point into it something that i wouldn't spend a lot of time on but i do add this to my actual skill bar because i only use demon form Demon Form is the only skill that I use on my hotbar, besides Soul Leech. So Demon Form. What, what do you need to look out for with Demon Form? Well the way it works is, if you want to have Demon Form 100% of the time, 
and you don't want to have to worry about dropping out of demon form because that's actually kind of dangerous in demon form you get a huge boost to your damage reduction you also get an attack speed buff a movement speed buff and you get extra damage so the more points you plug into that the more you'll see your physical damage and your attack speed go up however if you do want to have demon form at all times you need to have the cooldown at minimum 5.80 so if you see on the actual demon form skill it says 5.80 on mine you can get it lower if you want but technically the skill itself is a six second skill so as long as you have it at 5.8 you can proc it in that 0 0.20 range and not have to worry about it ever going down that way you can stay in demon form at all times that's why my cooldowns are only 42 percent that's literally all i needed in order to get it to the 5.80 on top of that like you like i said soul leech is the only other skill i use so i don't really have to worry about it and that's less than a five second cooldown on that so with that being said that's all of the skills i plugged in that's what i use for now um things can be changed depending on how many all talents you have and depending on what you're going for like i said if you're pushing like wormholes i recommend plugging in more skills into unholy possession instead but uh yeah that's what i use um you can see that i have 99 percent crit chance the only reason why it's not 100 is because I didn't roll optimal sockets on this gear. If I wanted to, I could keep re-rolling this gear till I had the most possible sockets that you can, and then I'd just make it 100%, but it's not needed. Alright, so hero levels. Hero levels, plugged in strength, armor percent, elemental damage, divine shield. Holy crap, guys, look how much divine shield that is. It's almost a full like million divine shield rupture for the um critical chance for the blood uh critical chance eight percent ten percent all stats 25 percent all resist first shot and then one or ten thousand strength so when it comes down to this guys i tested all of them since like multi-shot doesn't make sense because you're not really shooting anything for say like yeah it's kind of nice having multi-shot but in the end burst shot is better it allows you to attack quicker um oversized doesn't really benefit you at all unless you're using something like stickman steves or something that can actually benefit you from having oversized that doesn't really help a lot um so yeah that's the hero levels that I used. Mercenary, you can see that he's not very optimal. Um, if I was to plug anything into him, what I would do is I would go like this, get down to armor break, do that, plug in as much HP as I can, because the more HP your Merc has, the more it'll benefit this skill, the shielding. As you can see, it says percent of HP as shield. So the more HP that you have, the better chance that your Merc will apply a shield to you. Um, symbiosis allows your Merc to then migrate some of the damage that you take and he takes it instead. Um, I'd probably plug in all points into that. Um, replenish is just a chance for your player to get healed whenever your Merc takes damage. So probably plug in couple points into that um, and then I just max out armor break armor break is actually really nice and it stacks with uh, the armor break that you already have on then one point into there just you know so that your merc can return some of the damage to the enemy that they take that's how I would spec out my merc um, you know now it's time to see what you guys have been waiting for what is the build, Mr. E? What are you using? What gear? All right, so here we go. I am using the Satan setup. So that gives me the armor break, which is actually ridiculous, by the way. On top of that, I am using the new rune word atonement. I went ahead and rolled the, the highest possible penance that you can, which 
the skill itself is pretty much busted. Um, I'm I'm expecting them to at some point nerf it pretty hard, but for now, it's still in the game. They did add some tweaks to it recently to get rid of critical. So basically, it says on here that uh, you have a 68% chance to strike your enemies with holy shock. That holy shock was actually doing critical like strikes. Every single strike was crit. So they nerfed that, um, which kind of takes away from the total mob damage. But with that being said, it did not take away from the damage of single target. So that's not really a big deal. Um, portion of your strength being or granting you more ability power is really OP. That's the part that makes this really hot, like high damage. Um, it has a really slow attack speed, which kind of sucks. But you make up for that using other means to try to get the attack speed. Um, the best possible roll that you can get is weapon throw. I tested everything, even flash fire. And flash fire is not as good as weapon throw. Why? Because you can put flash fire on your merc's weapon. And your merc can apply flash fire for you. So yeah, go with the more damage setup, which is weapon throw. Um... Cheap King's Crown, the only reason why is because it has a huge amount of attack speed, all stats. It ha basically has a really high amount of stats, which in the end, between all the stuff I tried, is just more beneficial than anything else. So go with this for the attack speed, the strength, and the all stats percent. Uh, the extra all talents is really nice. Havoc. Havoc is busted. This got buffed super hard this season. The critical damage and the crit rate is just phenomenal. On top of that, the elemental damage and elemental damage percent is huge. And as you can see, a lot of items this season don't have a lot of all resist, but this has all resist on it. That alone is really nice as well. Uh, comparably to Rainbow, Rainbow has some really uh, good stats on it as well, but it doesn't have as much damage. It doesn't have the crit and the crit damage, which is the thing that actually takes this over the top. Uh, Rugal Sash of Undertaking. This is actually somehow way better than all of the other belts that I tried in the game, but if you're actually running around the map clearing and whatnot, I'd probably use Belt of Skulls instead. That extra 45% damage, attack speed, and movement speed is huge. So Belt of Skulls is probably what I would wear. Um, they also changed it so you can't swap in and out when you're inside of the actual wormholes now. You can't change your gear, it gets locked as soon as you go in. So it's really up to you which one of these you would wear. Um, Rugal Sash of Undertaking is actually a more damaging belt. But when it comes down to mob clear, probably Belt of Skulls is better. Um, especially when you get to the boss at the end. If you can't kill it quickly, all the buffs are going to fall off. And then you're stuck with whatever's on the belt itself. And the belt itself, its damage is actually quite worse than Rugal's. So you want to go with Rugal's if you actually want to go for the highest damaging build. Um, Giant's Band of Strength. This is actually huge. The Colossus buff is actually really, really nice. 20% chance to hit, oh no, sorry. 20% chance on hit, you gain 2.5% strength for five seconds, depending on the ability level. Well, your ability level is actually super high because of all this gear that you have on. So you're getting a 2.5% strength boost uh, on all of that, it's, it's huge. Um, on top of that, the flat strength percent is huge as well. Uh, yeah, you want this and you want this now. Like, it's better than all the other rings in the game. I've tested everything. Giant's Band of Strength. Best in slot. Predators. Savagery. Gloves. You can get whatever you want. Um, I just happen to have rolled the APS roll on this one. It doesn't really make a huge difference because... APS is nice, but you don't have to hit a certain threshold to hit the 100 billion single target damage. It's not exactly an attack speed build. It is, but it's not, and I'll explain it eventually. So, 
This is 100% roll. Obviously, all this gear is 100% rolled. If you went to 115%, you're kind of just overdoing it. You're going to hit way higher damage than what I'm doing now. Um, it just has a crap ton of crit on it. And on top of that, it has an all talent and all stats and a lot of armor. That's why I chose this. I wanted to try to get as high as I could to 100% crit rate. And without this, it's a little bit hard. So this is why I chose these gloves. Protein Shake. This one I did roll with attack speed on it on purpose. Um, you could get any roll in the game. You can even get a bonus to your strength percent, which is really nice. You could get a crit hit roll if you want an extra 5% crit rate. But I just went with an attack speed roll just for the extra, you know, attacks. Uh, whenever you proc this, you get a 50% strength bonus, which is, is huge. <laughs> uh, your, your whole character is based on strength, so you're just going off of strength, and that's why I chose this. On top of that, if I was below here level 90, I'd probably be using Sung Lee's. Sung Lee's allows you to have that burst shot that you actually get off of here level 90. And that's why you'll probably see me on live running with this instead, because I'm probably not here at level 90 yet. But once I hit hero level 90 and I can plug in burst shot, then I'll swap to protein shake. Last but not least, we're looking at the boots. So there are two different boots. You can get Arena Masters Gilded Marchers, or you can get Pearlescent Dreams. It's a lot harder to get the physical damage buff roll on the Pearlescent Dreams than it is to just get arena masters because you can see there's no actual damage buff on it however you can get lucky enough to get a bonus roll on arena masters like physical or an extra crit or an extra crit damage or an extra all talent or whatever and that would be huge however i didn't roll that uh it didn't roll any extra buff on this and i just tested it comparably comparably they're really similar they do really close to the same damage and on top of that if you're already at 100% crit this crit rate right here isn't going to apply so that's as if the skill wasn't even there at all you'd be going straight off of just crit damage at that point and the other stats um, when it comes down to it i'll be using this on live because this is what i actually happen to get on live and having that extra teleport is huge just being able to teleport around freely it uses almost no mana and it has no cooldown you can just teleport around the map it's very very nice obviously all of the stuff that i have on the setup is 100 rolls you could roll everything to 115 percent if you want except for rune words obviously and uh, everything would be way more op the crit rate and all that stuff would go up as well so it's up to you guys if you want to roll anything over 100 percent it's literally not something you have to do with this build completely up to you if you want to go farther than 100 percent it's not needed all right so now that we covered the actual demon slayer let's go on to the merc so what is the merc wearing this is kind of expensive guys this is expensive as hell <laughs> so first off why do i have all these buffs down here on the bottom of the screen i'm not doing anything it's because my merc's wearing a saint tommy's vibrant aura this is an angelic shield that can be dropped I've seen quite a few people drop it this season. My goal is to try to get one if I can, but if I don't, it's not the end of the world. What the buff does. The buff grants you basically a ton of different buffs. So basically what the shield does is whatever your merc's wearing, or if you're wearing it, it'll give you all those buffs. Uh, it gives you not all the buffs. I don't know why it says on here every buff in the game, but it's literally lying to you. It's not. You aren't getting every buff in the game. What buffs are you getting though? So what am I getting? I'm getting a thorns buff. I'm getting, well, holy shock is my own buff. A uh, concentration buff. I'm getting a holy freeze buff. A resistance buff. Fantasism buff. I'm getting a mending buff. And I'm getting a faint buff. Faint is movement speed. Resistance, you already know what it is. Holy Freeze, basically, if you can see down here, it's making everything get chilled and it kind of slows them. Thorns is basically if I take damage, they take damage back. Concentration is like a movement speed 
like attack speed buff. It's not as good as some, some, but it's actually pretty good. Fantasism is an attack speed buff. And Mending is a healing like health regen buff. So all of these buffs apply to you and your Merc. And that's why he's wearing it. On top of that, he's wearing a Shroud of Elements uh, for the Elemental Break. Whenever he hits a target, he'll apply the Elemental Break for me, so I don't have to do it. I've tried a lot of different things, and uh, Shroud of Elements is probably the best. Uh, you can roll this up to a 25, which would actually buff the damage a little more. I just went with the very first roll that I got, because that's how it is in online. You just go with what you get, unless you're really super rich and you can keep rolling as many as you want, or if you buy it straight off of a person in-game. I just went ahead and went with 18. Underworld Skullbreaker. It allows your Merc to apply Armor Break. He already has Armor Break on his skills as well, so he'll apply double armor break for you, and it can roll I think up to a 25, maybe even a 30, I don't know exactly the max roll on armor break on this this hat, but it's really nice, and that's what he's running with. Benetti's Rapier. Uh, I rolled flash fire on it, like I said, I don't need flash fire, my merc has flash fire, so he's running flash fire. Bonetti's defense is the reason he's wearing this. This is a really, really good one-handed weapon for you if you really want one-handed and a shield, but uh, I'm not. I'm running two-hander because it does way more damage and you don't need to have a shield if you're going for like a DPS build. So Bonetti's defense, it has a 20% chance to increase your attack speed by 300% for two seconds. And then it goes on a 20 second cooldown. Why is this so good? It's only two seconds. Well, in that two seconds, it's a difference between like 60 billion and 100 billion damage. Like that's how much difference it is. Your attack speed goes so high for two seconds that it allows you to hit that threshold that pushes your, your Demon Slayer way past its limit. So that's why I have it on my Merc because he allows you to have that huge burst of attack speed which will then draw out all the power of your demon slayer and allow you to hit those huge numbers without this your damage is basically cut in half it's not absolutely needed you're still going to be hitting for insane damage but with this you take your character to ultra instinct mode let's just be honest he's going beyond his limit with this item onto your merc there you have it that is the single target damage build if I was to go over here and test it on this you'll see that there's a huge da difference now since they did take off the whole crit chance at the ability you'll see that hitting a trillion damage just isn't realistic anymore but is it really needed <laughs> you're already hitting for so much damage single target why does it matter All right, guys, there you go. You have it. The Demon Slayer video you've been waiting for is finally here and over. I hope it was everything you wanted. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscription button. It would help me out a lot. Feel free to comment down below if you have questions or want to tell me anything whatsoever. And feel free to check me live on Twitch Monday through Fridays. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next video.